Good, Good morning. morning! It's Flex Friday, ES Army! Did you do that like... No, I actually had an itch, but... It's oh, Flex Friday! Oh my gosh, oh, it's Flex so Friday! so tired! Where, where's oh. the bathroom? It's, it's over there! What are you doing? <laughs> One of the very first personal oh. training clients that I had... Um, do you remember the, the, the Russian chick? Oh, yeah, in uh, New York. She's like, I want arms like yours. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And, you know, after like four weeks of training together, she could start, you know, seeing more definition. She's like, I need you to ask me where's the bathroom today. So I can, <laughs> so I can tell it's over there. It's over there. <laughs> She was funny. That's what it reminded me of. She was funny. Yeah. Good morning. Hey, uh, this is a live show. Uh, it's also going to be on YouTube. So if you're watching the replay, so glad you're here. If you're live, what is up? Jess, Missy, Brandy, Danny, Janice. Janice Coleman. It's Shh. been a minute. Janice, speaking of flexing, Janice. Brandy and Happy to have you guys Audrey. here. Happy to have you guys here. Melissa. So, uh, Friday's Q&A day, so this is where we take questions that you have submitted and we, um, we answer them to the yeah. best of our ability based on our own uh, personal life experience. And <laughs> you see that? So cute. <laughs> Callie's, Callie's sitting on the tennis Callie's ball right Callie's butt now. is sitting straight on a tennis ball. All right. Um, a few housekeeping things before we yeah. do get this party started. By the way, if this is your first This party time started. If this is your first time being on the show, go ahead and drop a one so we can officially welcome you. If you're a regular watcher, unbelievable, and you just know ES Army Strong, then not only are we excited, but so are Boogie and Callie. Extremely. Yes. So uh, it is a very special time of the year because tis the season of the Transformation Kickstart Challenge. I thought you were going to say... It's the holiday season. Well, da -da, we're da -da, officially entering it da -da, right after da -da. the TKC. And this is why this is going to be a very special TKC round because it's going to be a holiday special. Oh. This is what I like to call, I don't know if anybody is on pocket coaching, by the way, if you're not, I don't know if there's a link that we can drop for you to get weekly pocket coaching from us. And you know, what I shared in this week's pocket coaching is that Time is running out, you know, like first week of January, everybody's like, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang, why you gotta be hitting me and stuff? First it's the bathroom is who knows where and then smack. You know, new year, new me, but the reality is that we've got like less than 10 and a half weeks left for the year. And if you want your 2023 to be strong, then you need to start it strong. And you don't start a year strong by starting your day one at the start of the year. You begin your runway before that, so that come, you know, like January 1st, you can fly. And that's why we're doing it this time of year, because now it's the best time for you to get started with your 2023 goals. So TKC coming at you. We are starting on Monday, five days where we teach you the five main principles that I guarantee you, you haven't thought about unless you've been in the ES, ES Army and you've been immersing yourself in these teachings. And I have, I haven't, I will just, I will write down all of the thoughts okay. I've Okay, and if you haven't yet signed up or gotten your friends and family on board, and the reason I share this with you is because the more people who think like you and act like you, the more you rise better, faster, with less resistance. All you have to do in order to get yourself and them signed up is simply go to do not say www. Aaroninsuri.com forward slash TKC. This is I don't know why it drives me crazy. It still works. But when you say www. It's like, are you still using AOL Messenger? Well, I, I know the Or first, like Hotmail? I know. I are know. you sexygirl69 at hotmail.com still? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what www sounds like. So me. listen, listen. For a minute, <laughs> we as had far to. as all things tech, we had, we had to. to say it. We so need to get better. I at, am just being diligent. We need to do better at updating Sarit when we fix our tech stuff. 
don't, don't blame me. Blame the messenger. Just saying. All right. I'm just so spreading can, the world. Sergeant, you can come up here. Boogie, come here. Crying. Come That'd here. Really great. Come here, everybody. It's Flex Friday. It's a crazy day. Okay, so now it's my turn. Great. If you have questions that you'd like us to answer on Q&A, the fabulous Daniela Laprea has put the link in the chat. Um, and also you can submit questions to support at erinisreed.com. But that question should be, where do I submit my questions? Okay. And then if you want the pocket coaching sessions, which is really cool because what we do is we take uh, audio recordings and by we, I mean mostly Sarit, uh, but every once in a while I pop in there or we're both in there. And on TKC week, it's fun because we're both in there every day. If you want those pocket coaching sessions, they are small bite sized little, you know, few minutes of just tips, tools, tricks, lessons, insights, light bulb moments that we've had, things that will help you in this journey of weight loss and body transformation. Text put me in coach to what's that number? 910-593-4899. Put me in coach. 910. Can we comment that? I, I, what am I reading? Uh, just saying it. Don't let interrupt me, my number. Let me that, put, me. put me in coach. 910-593-4899. And then you'll get those messages and you'll get text reminders to show up for the transformation kickstart channel when we go live. So it's super cool. Is that all we got for updates? Next, for housekeeping. Next week, actually, we're going to have a super, super duper uh, interview on Friday's Espresso. So rather than a Q&A, you're going to want to be there because I will tell you there's going to be some energy mm -hmm. on that call. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the first question, shall we? Yeah. Aaron's flexing that shish muscle. <laughs> I've had it. My dad used to say, uh, my eyes are not brown, but my dad would be like, you're so full of shit. That's why up to here, that's why your eyes are brown. <laughs> what does that have to do with it? Shush muscle? I've had it up to here. That's what he would always say. I've had it up to here. Like, what is it happens when like, it gets... I don't know. You want to call me shit? No. Okay. What happens when it gets to here? Should I test it out? Like, that's the kind of kid I was. So, all right. First question comes from Mary James. Hey, loves, just signed up a friend for the TKC yesterday. Yay! Okay. Working Way on... to be a good friend. Working on getting him to post. Anyway... He's seen my progress over the last four months and stole my phone to listen to Q&A yesterday, but still has reservations about his ability to be successful because we are an army of chicks. I'm requesting a little reassurance for him, and then she has something for her too, but let's first let's address, you are a great friend for getting your friends involved. Um, I would like to say for anybody who's trying to sign other people up for them, I wouldn't do that just because if somebody really wants to change, they will sign their own asses up. That's just like step it sound, one. It sounds like hold, he... Hold on. Okay. It sounds like she could have persuaded him to sign himself up. Yeah. But if you're going to take initiative for somebody else, like a daughter or a sister or a mom or a grandma or somebody, a, a brother, whoever, um, and you're like, I signed you up for this thing you're probably going to meet resistance. So I don't know if this was the case or not. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, and we are an army of badass motherfuckers. So if he wants to be one of those, he can come join. What's his name? I wish you would have put his name. Dude. That's what I'm going to call you. This is kind of what I call everybody. I don't care what your gender is. I'm going to call you dude. Okay. It's a term of endearment from me. Dude. We are an army of badass motherfuckers. So if you want to sign yourself up for that crew. Yeah, you know, it just, it's, listen, I think that a, when you're pioneering anything, right? Let's say if you're a male wanting to pioneer what's right now predominantly a female community, it's not like we say no male is allowed. It's just like, I don't think that a strong enough male has stepped up to the plate and claimed, Hey, I'm going to be like a strong male leader 
and really immerse myself in it because it doesn't matter whether I have a penis or a vagina or whatever, or whatever, right? It, not, none of that matters. What matters is what do I want to get out of these, out of this for myself? And do these people seem to be my people? You know, like, listen, we are all about come as you are. I don't care, you know, like what is your, um, sex, the sex that you were born as, right? Because we have some members of our community who were born one sex, but they didn't feel like, you know, that's really where they belong. So they changed it. Or what's your sexual orientation? What's the color of your skin? You know, who do you prefer to worship? Like what kind of pet do you have? We like some what of color you guys, you, you have birds. What color do you like to dye your hair? Yeah. Like none of that matters. So Mary, like congratulations for, you know, being a good friend. I would encourage you to have him listen to this. Dude, I would love a Dude. strong male leader to step in and say, you know what? I'm going to be the first one. And then all it takes is for one. We actually have a couple. Another. We actually have a couple. Jonathan Lee. We actually have a couple. Uh, Mark still pops his head in. Her, but Mark, uh, Mark Cray. Right. And, and OG Mark. Fleek? Yeah. I haven't seen him in a minute. Yeah, but he, he likes some stuff every once in a while. He pops, love Mark Fleet. He pops his head in sometimes. So listen, yeah. you know, at the, at the start, it takes a strong person. Because if you really believe in it, who cares? I want to say how we got here, too. Mm -hmm. Why do we have so many women? Do we only help women? We like th This question isn't asked a lot, but I'm sure some people think it. They just don't ask it. Dude, we can help any person. The, the deal is, you know, when you're first starting out, it's really important to talk to a specific person because that's how you guys all came here. Like, I would love to see in the chat how many of you clicked on some kind of ad or something you saw because whatever was being said in that video or whatever, you were like, oh my God, they're talking to me. Um... Rory Vaden and uh, Ed Milet did a podcast together. And one of the things that Rory said in that podcast is, you are most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. You are most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. And what that means is, since we've been in your shoes, me, clicked on the porta potty ad, Saw an ad on Facebook. Yeah, but what, did you click because you you were like, oh my gosh, like this is me. Like they're describing me or my problem that I have or a light bulb moment just went off for me because oh, I've been like battling this. It's it's because we were that. Mm -hmm. that were that was our Those were our problems. Those were our struggles. And so we are most powerfully positioned to serve the person we once were and walk with you through the trench that we've already been through. And that we've already walked through a million times with other people. Now, when you say, hey, you know, <laughs> you, you speak to the problem you had. Also, when you see a female on a camera and you're a female, there's some kind of immediate uh, thing that you can resonate with. Then when we start talking about the problems that you had too, you're like, oh, yeah, that's me. And I'll be honest too, I have come across many more women who struggle with the things that we talk about than men. That doesn't mean that they don't have those struggles or problems or issues, but I cannot speak from a male's perspective because I'm not one. So it's easier to attract what you already are, mm -hmm. right? And so that's how we got to this place. And yet in our messaging, it says we help women lose weight and gain confidence, right? So. We do, it doesn't say we help only women. But when we say we help women, you go, oh, I'm a woman. Okay, they're talking to me. And if you don't do that in the beginning, then you're talking to nobody. We help people. You're like, okay, so does everybody. Like, who cares? And you just go on. We couldn't get your attention if we were too broad and generalized. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we only help women. 
but we will be able to resonate most with women. And guess what? There's a lot of guys and guess who they attract? Guys. I'll tell you, I know eventually there's going to be like, all that it takes is a few like strong dudes. Yep. And, and listen, you know, or even some, so, so we, when we, when we had a chat with Bedros, I was going to say even some male connections that we have who have predominantly male communities, you know, right. So like what we hear is listen. So like the, the struggles that men go through is that, you know, like throughout their, like throughout centuries, right? Like males have been the dominant sex right so like stronger they, faster yeah like you know like breadwinner supporting the family all about that we're about female empowerment so like you know we teach you guys how to claim your own freedom we so, also live in a very different society yeah but you know like because males have literally that's what society teaches them like you have to be the strong one people have to depend on you i think it takes an extremely you know um strong leader to be willing to be vulnerable in front of women and say hey i struggle with this same thing and i feel like i belong here because yeah. Like, this is you literally going against the grain. I believe that, you know, over time, we will have more dudes in our community. It's just going to take a couple strong leaders first who are willing to just be humble with themselves, who are willing to be real and be vulnerable in front of badass, strong women. You guys, I can imagine that we probably intimidate the shit out of a lot of men. That's probably true. Not because we're like, oh yeah, everybody, see how intimidated I am. No, because... Because we're vulnerable. Be, because, like, women have been taught to be vulnerable and soft and say, I'm sorry all the time. And dudes have been taught to be the strong ones. So, we are just, we're trailblazing in this community, like, so many social constructs. You guys need to understand this. So, you know, like... When you see like the first of any community, it's, it's a really strong individual. And I would say we need to come together as a community and really like love on them and support them so that they can feel more empowered. I don't think there's anybody that comes into this community that doesn't get loved on and supported. That very, very true. But I mean, I'm, I'm just saying we need to just keep doing what we're doing and eventually I believe that we'll be able to reach different populations as well. You know, like bring males. your husbands, bring your sons. Hey, we said that in the burn zones. Bring your nephews. You know, it's bring just your dogs. it's just at the at the beginning at the beginning. You know, it's like you guys are like, dude. Like I feel like I've known you my whole life, and I'm sure the dudes feel the same way. But it's gonna take a couple connections to get like. I guarantee you that males struggle with the same thing, but because dudes have to like appear to be like the strong ones, like I guarantee you that everybody's scared to talk about it. Everybody's scared to talk about it because I, talk about I believe that if you're human, talk about what? To talk about struggling with like food, self image, well, like men and women are men and women both. Of course. It's just because it makes you vulnerable. And I don't think you have to be, be a man or woman either to feel vulnerability or be scared of being vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there for criticism and criticism is one of the most basic human fears. Yeah. So I'm gonna say it again. Bring your husbands. This is episode is for them actually. Gentlemen. <clears throat> Gentlemen. You're welcome. <laughs> so, at a call with Brandy Coke this week, and Brandy. according to her lovely son, we're annoying. So maybe, maybe <laughs> we will not be able to help men because maybe we are annoying to men. I don't know. I don't. I. I, I think. Uh, I don't know about you, but all of my friends were boys. 
I didn't have friends really growing up. I was well, I had I'm, imaginary friends. When I say all, I mean acquaintances, because I skateboarded. Anyways, um, I don't think that. I think that kids think a lot of people who are older than them are annoying. So, that's fine. Let's go, Melissa Morgenthaler. He probably actually has a crush on us because that's how little boys, you know, they <laughs> they say mean things about girls they have crushes on. So Let me pull your hair. Brandy, maybe. We, <laughs> hey, we still talked about how we're going to help him get jacked. Oh, he will love us then. Okay, the second part of this question for me. You deserve to have your question because you're such a good friend here. Um, I'm mostly lactose intolerant. I can eat cheese sparingly. I'm looking into calcium supplements to help prevent bone density loss. What strength would you recommend? Wait, you're looking into a calcium supplement, but what strength would we recommend? So here's what I would oh, recommend. what strength? Like how much? So here is what I would really recommend um, for anybody who wants to reduce um, the progression of bone loss and just improve bone density in general. If you're getting older, you are susceptible. I'm just saying. We all are. Like once you reach the age of 35, bone and muscle degeneration is a thing. And that's why you need more muscle and you need strength training and no you will not look like you just stepped out like of sorry and <laughs> i am for anybody who's coming to es live when you see me in person you're gonna see how much smaller than you think i am but I am. this is not an illusion the, no just it's not so an you illusion. know this is not much smaller than you imagine in person <laughs> this is smaller than you imagine in person. <laughs> so listen, bone density, muscle density is a thing that we should all strive for at all times because that's what helps us to increase our runway. And the best way to increase bone density is what we call weight bearing activities. Okay, examples of weight, so like this is why the burn zones, for anybody who's starting out, it, it is such a remarkable program. There was intentionality with every single workout. Um, so examples of, you know, um, weight bearing exercises are basically all the compound movements that we run you guys through. Like the squat, like the lunge, like the carry, uh, like the press, anything like that, where there is an external weight forcing down on your skeletal structure, that stress by default will help you to increase the production of bone and muscle and will help out with that. Um, so, you know, for you, what I would recommend is if you specifically have some kind of degeneration and maybe like if also like osteoporosis is something that runs in your family, I would recommend that every single day you get yourself a pair of kettlebells, girl, and you go on a 200 meter farmer's carry around the block. Can I say something? Yeah. I just thought of something. Hmm. You guys have ever heard the term like I'm big boned? And that's like usually women thinking that using an excuse thinking it's a reason why they can't get lean is because they're big boned right mm -hmm. okay so i'm thinking about bone density and weight bearing activity increases bone density it makes your bones thicker and denser and stronger now when you are overweight you are increasing your bone density by walking anywhere ever so it's true it is probably true. Now, big boned by, uh, by, um, what is it called? Genes, genes, their genes, your genetic disposition is not something that would contribute to you not being able to lose weight or get lean or look right. muscular mm -hmm. at all. Right. 
However, it is true that if you weigh 300 pounds and you're carrying 300 pounds on your joint, on your bone structure, you are making your bones denser. By, you have to because your body's a, a survivor. You are a survivor. And if your body's like, well, sh I'm gonna be carrying all this weight all the time, I better get strong enough to carry that weight. That's why you also see like bigger people can usually lift more weight because mass, like if you are bigger and you're already carrying around a lot of weight, your body has to adapt to that. You have to become stronger to be able to carry that. Danny made a beautiful, beautiful post, uh, I believe it was this week, where she said, I realize I lost, uh, or my weight vest that I've been wearing is, I think she said 25 pounds, I could be wrong, but I think she said 25 pounds, and she's like, you know what I realized? That's the amount of weight that I lost, and that's what I was carrying on my body every single day. And it's like, you don't realize, it, for one, like it's making you stronger, which is, a good thing your organs are not getting stronger your hormones are not productive or as efficient as they could be um, but your bone density and and your strength are greater than somebody smaller than you who is not making an effort to get themselves stronger because you have to be now if you're in that position wonderful because you can uh, begin losing weight and getting leaner and you've got greater bone density that's wonderful mm -hmm. um, but that just dawned on me like oh I'm big boned I'm like actually <laughs> you probably are by nurture by nurture by adaptation you have to be because I'll tell you right now like well not not me right now, because I don't regularly carry around 250 pounds a day, but because I'm used to lifting, I could probably have a 250 pound body and carry it around okay, but like, you're literally lifting weights all day. Imagine that on your heart. That's why, like people who are more overweight have a higher susceptibility to, you know, like heart issues. When you're stronger, physically with your like muscle structure your bone structure but because your you vitals. have you have so much fat surrounding your vital organs your heart your liver your lungs your everything they're they're getting trapped and suffocated and they can't they can't work like they need to work so you know it's yeah it's a it's good and bad, I suppose. Yeah. More bad than good, probably. Yeah. So I, I would truly give you that movement prescription. Movement is food, you guys, and food is medicine. And there are some things that movement would can can absolutely cure. Do you remember um, back in the day when we used to do personal training, uh, my client Carrie Dederick. I had a personal training client who came to me. Mm -hmm. That's because right. she just got diagnosed as, you know, um, having osteoporosis. And she didn't want that decline to happen so fast. And within six months, she went back. She, she got back to normal. So you guys, why do we share this with you? When you put your body in the right environment in terms of food, in terms of movement, in terms of people... Your body is the greatest machine. It will fall back in place. Ain't nothing wrong with your body. And if people have told you this, 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 and that, studies show, blah, 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 blah. If there is a 97% chance of you staying stuck, then there is a 3% chance of you staying unstuck. So you need to get in front of the right people who can help you to get unstuck. That's just the reality of it. For anybody who's new here, because you're joining us for the TKC, you just wait on Monday. We're going to like blow your guys' minds. You just got to show up. We're going to blow your guys' mind with the misinformation that society has taught you. So, okay. The other thing that I want to just talk to Mary about real quick is Mary, sometimes, you know, so there is such a thing. I'm just going to go biology on you real quick. You know, 
When you are deficient in calcium, getting more calcium may not necessarily be the thing that you need. And this is when I will say double check with your doctor um, with regards to as far as supplementation goes, what would be best? Because the reality is, is that there is such a thing as the magnesium calcium channel, okay? And they, they work together hand in hand um, as antagonists in the sense that maybe your calcium levels are low because you need more magnesium. And by default is going to boost, um, you know, more calcium in your body. Now, if I were, I would take the immune boost. Yeah, and weight bearing exercises. However, right, like we do not do blood tests. So what I would recommend is chat with your doctor to see what it, what is, like, is it really the calcium or is the calcium deficiency the manifestation? No matter what, do like a 200 meter farmer's carry every single day. And maybe what you'll need is just a little bit more magnesium in your diet and your calcium levels will go back to normal levels. Or maybe you will need calcium supplementation. And if so, you know, ask your, your, your doctor, like what dosage do you need to take? Isn't there calcium, a lot of calcium too, and like green, green leafy, vegetables yeah and you know like greek yogurt is great um and you know even if you're I, I i know you said you're lactose intolerant i'm not sure to what degree you are but like greek yogurt for example or like kefir um there's so many live and active cultures that you know depending on your degree of being intolerant because of the abundance of live and active of cultures like it might actually be you know beneficial to your gut and you might not have a flare-up however if you're severely lactose intolerant then that can just inflame the shit out of you so you know these are things that are beyond me because you will need to do some blood tests or sensitivity tests in order to figure out where you're at there but you know no matter what do the farmer scaries um, and then you know get your blood work done so that you can really see what the heck is going on and if supplementation needed, ask the right questions so that you can figure out, you know, the best solution for you, really. Okay. We've got through one question. Oh, here we go. Next one from Sherlyn. BAS. You guys, what does that stand for? What's a boss? Boss stands for big ass salad okay what's your favorite things to put in your big ass salad and salad dressing choices wonderful question I actually made one already for this evening and I'll tell you exactly what's in it there is mixed greens whatever they put in there I don't know different stuff there yeah there's different like mixes of mixed greens some kind of mixed green. Is this one with the chard? No. Or no chard? No. Ooh. You know what I learned? Costco has the one with the chard, and Sprouts has the ones without the chard. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Sarit's not a fan of chard. So, we put, uh, I put in there uh, mixed greens. I put in some romaine lettuce. I put, that does it for like the leafies. Uh, then I put in bell pepper, cucumber, red onion. What'd you do for carb today? Carb. I finished the beets and the chickpeas that you started yesterday because they were there. We go all colors of the rainbow. Okay, so usually we put some kind of carb in there because we it's it's like a it's a salad treat we call it, and sometimes we put or most of the time we put in some kind of nut because it's also a salad treat. It makes it fun, you know what I mean? Now look, you can make a salad and you can way overdo it in the salad too. Like if you have, we like, we prefer pistachios most of the time for our salad. You can have a pistachio salad and it's not really a salad. I have been guilty sometimes of just like eating the pistachios and the apples because I'm like, I don't feel like eating this. And I'll eat some of the salad with it, but really I just like want the pistachios and the apples. Sometimes, especially when she started, she, Erin will eat salad like a child. I won't deny it. 
but yeah, okay, so so that's one option what we made. Uh, arugula, we like to use, usually when we do beets and chickpeas, it's with arugula and romaine, but mm -hmm. this anyway. time of year when Costco has the butternut, the, the pre-cut, the pre, um, pre -cut butternut peeled squash. butternut squash. Oh yeah. That's really good. We bake that and we put that in the salad as our Sometimes corn. we roast cauliflower and we'll put it in a salad. Uh -huh. um, we pretty much do the same salad dressing or unless we run out. Or did you say apple? Sometimes we do pear. Apple, when, pear. When tis the season. Or like in the summer, during strawberry. The summer, yeah, strawberry. during the summer we do like nectarine and stuff. You know what's really good too would be like arugula, romaine, the onions, cucumbers, but then do um, like strawberries and um, walnuts Grapes. And, and feta cheese. Grapes. Our dressing always stays the same. Unless we run out of something. But Which it's rare. We plan to not. Unless we make, there was a time where we went to this restaurant and they made a really, a really good kale and chickpea which was it kale restaurant? or chickpea? It was a reunion kitchen. What's that salad? It has this oh. slivered almonds. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the kale salad. So And it was tahini based. It's tahini based. Sometimes when we go to restaurants and like we, we learn what the base is. So we, we when we go out to eat, we make sure that it's up to par with our standards always. And, you know, like we will always find out like how are the salad dressings made and if it's really unique and it's delicious then we will try to model mimic and master it at home um so that salad it was tahini based tahini mm -hmm. tahini is basically like the paste of a sesame so like how peanuts make peanut butter tahini sesame is make tahini it's which like is sesame amazing butter. yeah like in the middle east that's like the their peanut butter Peanut butter amazing. of the Middle East. Yeah, so good. And um, yeah, I think it was that and a little bit of lemon. Tahini, arugula, and just like, And then they had some chickpeas, whole chickpeas in there, and then there was slivered almonds, I think. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, mixing up salads is like one of the most fun things. Did strawberries and walnuts yesterday. Nice. Yeah, cooked butternut squash. And, and what do we usually do with that? If, with the butternut, like beets? We, beets are mm, good with that? No, for the butternut, for the color, we keep it as is. The beets, the beets would like, the color of it will leak in. Like, we're, we're pretty picky about presentation. By we, she means her. And like like when the beets bleed into the butternut squash, like when the, the colors, beet drops, the colors just don't look as good. So when we do butternut, like we just go double portion butternut. This is a sweet thing, guys. Yeah, I'm like put Mama in Mo, all the carbs. Mama Mo knows what I'm talking about. Put in all the carbs. I'm like I don't care. Put the beets with the cauliflower and make them fucking purple. Ah, yeah, whatever. Nutrients. All right. Okay. I think we got maybe one or two more questions depending on how long we go. Okay. Okay, this could be the last one. This is from Cassie. Cassie says, I take medication that is loaded with sucralose. Oh my gosh. Got it. I was previously on a similar medication that was loaded with sodium. My question is, which is a better, a lot of sucralose or a lot of sodium? Okay, so I want to talk on the sodium thing for one second. I wonder what, what is the medic what does so, the medication do? So one thing that I, so just by hearing that question, you guys, I want, I want to just mic drop on sodium real quick. But before we get into that, you guys, like if sucralose is a poison and your medication has sucralose, wouldn't you question whoever made it? I will. This is a beautiful question. This, Hold on. This is a beautiful question because most people wouldn't think to question it. Why? Because it comes from a doctor and we would, we think that people are like 
us and that everybody means well. And so if somebody has a degree and they are making a recommendation that we take something that we should be able to trust that person. And if this medication is made to help us treat a problem or an issue that we would trust, the person that made it is genuinely trying to help our issue. Yeah, That's a fair expectation. Unfortunately, it's not reality. And so this is a beautiful question because we get to help there be a better understanding of pharmaceuticals and medication. Yeah. And something that I want to share with you guys is please know as we are making you aware of these things, if you're currently on medications and you're noticing certain things because maybe there is a sucralose ingredient, by no means just stop taking it. We're However, not, we're not doctors. We're not prescribing anything. We're just yeah and it, you know if you want an adjustment always always talk to your doctor um however you know Educate i will yourself. be i will be the first to tell you that the pharmaceutical industry is not necessarily to be trusted they're not your um friends. and we're not saying that all medications are bad a lot of medications have actually like most of them have really gotten us to where we are today and has enhanced our lifespan now you know we're just entering a new era where you know um the pharmaceutical industry along with the fda along with the food industry are you know putting out certain information to make us believe that we're unwell so that they can actually gain more of a market share and more consumers and what they're actually do is they're diagnosing you for just real life things um, to make you be dependent on it without actually giving you a solution okay so you know gotta look at it from both ways um and that's the power of you know like getting in the right rooms you know with with the right people because you don't know what you don't know and you know um the other thing about sodium is that you guys, the reason sodium is not bad. The problem with sodium is just like carbs are not bad. High fructose corn syrup is bad. Carbs are not bad. Salt is not bad. MSG is bad. Why do I share this with you? Because there's nothing wrong with sodium. The problem with sodium is that most of the foods that you'll find at the grocery store or that you'll find nowadays are loaded with processed sodium and not all sodium is created equal. You actually need, look, there's sodium in the saline and in IVs for a reason. Like, you know, your, your nerves cannot function without sodium. Like your muscles cannot function without sodium. Um, if you had no sodium in your body or were deficient in sodium, like your kidneys are going to shut down. So like sodium is fine. It's just, Every element the, has a purpose. The reason why sodium has a bad rap, especially, you know, like within the medical society or people who have high blood pressure, you know, like heart disease and stuff like that. Nobody got heart disease because they put too much Himalayan salt in their big ass salad. Let me tell you that nobody it's because they ate too much campbell soup that's loaded, chef boyer d that's that's processed with spaghetti shitty, with shitty sodium it's because of the you know like high sodium that's you know the mcdonald's serve that it's of the lowest quality that's got that's what got the person to where they are today so it's just it's important to look at what is the actual truth and it it's, it's and, also and what accumulative is, over time. It's not like, oh, you eat one McDonald's one time, or you eat this one time or that one time, or you eat a chocolate cake one time. Like, It's the accumulative, consistent consumption of these things that really does it. Yes, not all sodiums are created equal, just like not all carbs are created equal. Um, you know, I would say if you had to choose between the medication with sucralose or with sodium, choose the one with sodium. Um, you know, the reason why the sodium intake 
of Americans is so high is because most Americans eat a high processed foods diet. And, you know, processed sodium is a great preservative. It's a great preservative, which means it's, you know, it, 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 it enhances shelf life. And from a food industrialization standpoint, it's, it makes sense. Typically, you know, the long, I want to give it a general rule also, like typically the longer the shelf life, this is not true in all cases. Typically, the longer the shelf life, the worse the product. Now, this is not true with all things because there are canned foods, like you can get canned tuna, you can get canned, uh, you know, you can have uh, rolled oats, you can have, you know, uh, dried beans and things like that that are really For the great. most part, we're talking about. But for the most part, like you shop the middle of the store, not like the parameter of the store. If you shop the middle of the store, like 90% of those things that have a long shelf life are going to be terrible. Yeah, like the sodium that's in your Doritos or in your Campbell's soup or in, you know, like your Cheetos. Like, that's shitty. I think I just tasted Cheetos when I did that. Okay, but like the salt that we put in our big-ass salad, that shit's good. I'll tell you guys, on days, on days where I sweat a shit ton, I actually add Himalayan salt. To, water. to my water because it helps to hydrate. So yeah. it, it's really important that you understand the good information. Just like so many of you guys come to us, you're, you're so scared of carbs. And I'll tell you that that's probably one of your biggest problems with nutrition. And how much too? Okay, so during the summertime, we sweat a lot. There is salt coming out of our pores. This is why Sergeant likes to lick us when we're sweaty, man. Um, Don't give it away. Now they know what happens when he licks us. <laughs> okay, so that is, that sounds not good. You went too far. Okay, so how much though, how much Himalayan salt? I just like to give you an example of Sarit saying too, like... I like, just looked up the ingredients okay. of Doritos. Okay, I have on. to. Okay, hold okay. on. So how you actually put a good amount of salt, and I do this too, because you get cramps. Like we'll get like our muscles will start to cramp if we don't have enough sodium. And so in our water in the summertime, we put extra like a fourth uh, or a half a teaspoon, a whole half of a teaspoon of salt, like pink Himalayan salt. Boom. That's like a, that's a good amount of salt. Why the heck would somebody put extra salt? It's because our, what we eat on a regular basis is not highly processed sodium filled foods so we have to supplement with more so yeah just back to Sarit's point that like the sodium is not the bad guy no the sodium's not the bad guy mm -mm. do you guys want to hear a fun fact that i just found out do yes. you know that ingredient number five in Doritos. How many billion? I want to read it. I want to know. I want to read it. I won't give it away. Let me see it. I want to know how many billions of dollars that company makes per year by literally poisoning people. Do you guys know what the fifth ingredient of Doritos is? Hold on. Let me see this. Take a wild guess based on the conversation we just had. Five. Four. I know it's coming in a little slow, so I'm just gonna share it with you. Are you, you talking guys. about this right here? No, this. Yep, Janet for the win. MSG. The fifth ingredient in Doritos is MSG. And you guys, I'm not saying you guys, but maybe you guys are giving it to your kids. Doesn't it blow your mind? Do you see what I mean? Like the information that they don't want you to know. Monosodium. This is glutamate. why they do. So let's talk about MSG real quick. Okay, like, in case you guys don't want, it doesn't say MSG in the ingredients. It says mm -hmm. mono, how do you pronounce it? Uh, monosodium, monosodium glutamate. glutamate. Monosodium glutamate. And it's two words, so it's not even three So you words. wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. So fucking tricky, man. Sneaky motherfuckers. Hold on. Let me let me look up another 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 favorite snack. You guys. 
So um, if you're finding value in today's conversation, can you do me a favor and share it on your Facebook? And share it. You know what? This and too, say the like this is a message that needs to be heard. This is amazing because a lot of people who say I eat healthy think that they eat healthy and but, they are not lying from what their level of understanding of food is. They're not they're, they really believe like many of you either in the past previously or currently believe you're eating healthy and you're like I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I eat healthy. For one, you might be lying to yourself and you're just unaware of the bullshit that you eat and, and you know, you eat it or you're like, oh, I guess I do have two glasses of wine every night, uh, but you just don't realize it. Or you are eating things that have been marketed to you as healthy that are not by any means healthy. Mm -mm. You just have no idea. Who likes Cheetos? Hold on. Foods that claim to be healthy too, like just look in a little further. Look in a little further. And if you go to a restaurant, hold on. If you go to a restaurant, ask, how things, my mind. ask how things are made. If it's a restaurant that is really cheap, chances are they purchase their ingredients really cheap. And if it's really cheap, it is not good. It's like a good general rule. So. Are you guys finding value in this conversation? So, Cheetos, you guys. They made a baked, they which now, means it's healthier. They, they now have a baked line, okay? So instead of it being, uh, what is it? Um, um, how do they make the regular Cheetos? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. What? So who would the baked Cheetos stand out to? All of us. People health, health who are health conscious who would go for the baked rather than the fried. Okay, so they throw a big baked. So what would you think? It's oh, cleaner. Yeah, it's cleaner. And then let me just look at the macro. This is this is criminal. This is criminal in my opinion. Because because listen listen to this, you guys. This is where the pa 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 pa. This is where the, if it fits my macros people, or my, or the calorie counters, if you've come from the, if it fits my macros or calories, let me see you drop an amen, because I used to be in that group, and like, you can, oh, it fits in my macros, so I'm just gonna have some baked Cheetos. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Me At the end of the day, I would save calories so that I could eat my fucking licorice that I wanted to eat. Like Tom Tom from the Three Ninjas. Ooh, so so thirty four pieces of a hundred and forty calories. That means I can get more for my buck. Give me more Cheetos. I'm hungry. Okay. Okay. So. And it's got okay. So for thirty four pieces, you're getting a hundred and forty calories, and you're getting twenty grams of carbs, and only five fats. How many pieces? 34. Good that's, amount. Good amount. So good old me will go take... Okay, that's 4.1 4. calories per Cheeto. Let me take... Yeah, it's, it's totally decent. I'm like, you kidding me? It's like eating two apples. I might as well go for the Cheetos. Duh. Because it fits. It fits in your calories. It fits in your macros. But guess where it doesn't fit? In your fucking body. You know why? By the way, Doritos and Cheetos have the same mom and dad, which means that, you know, they have the same core values, which means <laughs> that if Doritos has MSG, then that's why I was like, I have to go look at Cheetos because I guarantee you Cheetos had that You're shit moving too. your phone around so much. And even the healthy Cheetos, my friends, Oops. not only have MSG, that shit also has yellow number six. The fuck is yellow number six? Okay, so this is funny. Side note, Ellen DeGeneres has a stand-up. Everybody should watch it. It's called Here and Now. Um, and if you know what I'm talking about, you're like, yes, it's amazing. It's very old. And she has this uh, part where she's like, who makes up colors? Like, whose job is that? She's like, well, you have all these different, you know, she was looking at paints for the wall in her house. And she's like, of all these colors, like you have yellow, you have canary, you have smoker's teeth. <laughs> And uh, every time I hear yellow number whatever, I always think of that part in the stand-up. 
So from from a, just a big corporation standpoint, in case you guys are wondering. Look Cheetos, up veggie straws. Look up veggie straws. Yeah, hold on. Cheetos is made by Frito-Lay, which is owned by PepsiCo. Pepsi, Coke, Kellogg's. Poison, you guys. The, Nestle. The, 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 the companies that run this country are literally giving you poison. And that is what we're working against. Can See, So, like, we have what we call, like, a misinformation problem that is only going to take us further and further away. You, you guys just wait till the TKC. If you're new to the community, we're going to drop bombs on you. And then you guys just wait for the book that we're working on right now because we're going to blow your fucking minds. Okay. I want... Oh, Any, anybody veggies? ever like eat veggie straws because they it's got are veggies. like, oh my god, this is a better version. Veggie straws, like, yeah. Let's look this up. Here, hold on. Let me just test. Veggie okay. straws. Potato starch. Potato flour, corn starch, tomato paste, spinach powder, salt, potassium chloride, sugar. Why do we need sugar in veggie straws? Not as bad. It doesn't have canola oil, safflower oil. But it's, it's shitty. It's, it's still shitty. shitty. It's but shitty, it, but it's not. The, but it's the deception is, oh, veggie straws are healthy for you. I would not call this healthy at all. No. You don't get any of the nutrients that you get from veggies. What is in here? A spinach powder? A beetroot powder, color, color, is there actual beetroot powder or is it just the color of beetroot powder? I don't even know. The Deception. What movie is that from? The Deception. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for today's espresso guys thank you so much for joining us hopefully this was valuable share it with a friend if you're watching us on youtube subscribe to our channel because it's more fun mic drop we just hit 10k on youtube holler so if you're and thank you if you are a subscriber thank you so much for being in the community being a subscriber finding our content decent enough for you to be compelled to hit the subscribe button it really means a lot to us because it helps us to share our message with more people because as that channel grows more people uh, get to see it and then um, click on things and, and learn and be more educated and help themselves be the best version of themselves so appreciate you so much yeah thank you guys for showing up as you are go and invite your friends and family who are ready willing and wanting to become better to join us for the TKC. No need to force them because if you have to force them, they're just not ready. Sure. Um, and that's just the reality of it. All we can do is our best. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And we look forward to seeing you Monday evening for the first day of the TKC. Go be great, everybody. Take care and have a great weekend. See ya.